Greetings, fellow mortals, and welcome back to the Two Foolish Mortals podcast. This is part four of our five-part vacation planning special. Yup. Where we are talking all about driving to Disney. My name's Kat. My name's Russell. And like we said, this is the Two Foolish Mortals podcast, where we get together once a week on Saturdays and talk about travel disney and making the most out of your next walt disney world vacation this is our special though so all week you've been here you know that already though yeah and if you're new here to this one you obviously go back to the beginning <laughs> <laughs> so like i said we're talking about driving to disney and we have covered whether or not it's for how to figure out if it's for you um, things to keep in mind, calculating costs, all that stuff. Today we're going to talk about tips and tricks. He's yawning, so he can't respond. Ooh. Someone's a little tired today? Yeah, it's been a long one. Wow. Okay, so we're going to talk all about tips and tricks. Um, let's just jump right into it. Let's do it. You ready? Yeah. Um, number one, I have plan, plan, plan. <laughs> That's a tip and a trick. <laughs> yeah, it is a tip because and a, a lot trick. Of, sometimes you don't plan and... Things go off the rails. Yep. <laughs> so, obviously, we talk a lot about planning. This is an information and planning podcast. Um, but when we talk about driving and the flexibility with driving, I think a lot of people want to just skip over that part. They're like, oh, I'll just get in the car and go. That's me. And everything will be absolutely fine. That is also me. <laughs> that is not always the case, though. And that's never cat. <laughs> no. Um, no. So, although there are times where I'm just like, let's wing it. Generally speaking, I like to have a little bit of structure. And then something goes sideways. And then she goes, yep, we should have planned. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and so what I'm suggesting when I say having a plan is just like, look at your route ahead of time. Figure out how much it's going to cost. We've covered a lot of this already, but I just think it's important to, like, say again, if you're watching for the first time, like, or listening for the first time, I should say, <laughs> um, you know, just take the time to figure out what you're going to do, figure out where you're going to stop, where you're going to stay if you do stop, especially currently. We're currently doing this in 2021 where COVID is still a thing. Um you want to know where you're stopping. You want to know what their policies and procedures are. If there's anything you need to know about stopping at that place or in the, that state, you know, plan. Yeah. Just period. <laughs> I mean, obviously you wouldn't have anything else to say about that because... No, that's... Yeah. Uh, you have been against me planning, though, a little bit sometimes. Like, not necessarily, like, super against, but you have had moments where oh, you're yeah. like, oh, I don't want to deal with that. Oh, yeah. And then you've totally. had moments where you're like, oh, I get why we did that now. <laughs> yup. I openly admit that. It's Almost that's every legit. time. <laughs> um, number two, we're moving on to the next thing. Divide up what you need for the drive versus what you need for your vacation. Yeah, the, the I think we, we talked about this in an earlier uh, part, but yeah, compartmentalizing the vehicle and when you're packing is just, that's a best tip and trick combo. Like, it's perfect. For sure. And one of the things I'll even go so far as to do is to pack a bag for our drive and then pack a separate bag for our actual Disney vacation. Yeah, so that way, room. we're not even like... Like, there's not even that risk of, of losing something or digging into something that you would have needed for your vacation because you're not even touching it. Yeah. And you run the risk of ruining something for your vacation on your way down, and that would suck. Yeah. So, um, so that's a big tip. That's actually one of my favorite tips on this list because it just makes things so much easier. Well, and I think even for me, too, though, is it actually stands out from our most recent trip. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, when you're in the room at that later on at night and you're, you know, you're drinking, drinking some water and eating dinner and you realize, wow, that was so simple. And, you know, then you're able to go take your shower, you're able to relax for the rest of the night. And there was absolutely no effort because you did it at the beginning when you planned the trip in the first place. Yeah, exactly. It's not Huge. like, I think what you're trying to say too, is it's not like you're digging through a bag to get to like your pajamas, for example. Um, you know what I mean? Like you have that right yeah. there, you know exactly what you need for that trip. Yep. Um, it, it really, 
it makes things so easy. Uh, number three on our list is bring along food and or snacks. Again. I mean, duh. We talked about it before. Fave, bring your faves. Now, I'm going to go a step further because this is something I did. Um, I was testing it out during our last trip and it turned out to work out so nice is I divided up our snacks and um, like anything that wasn't a cooler item, you know, anything that didn't need to be in the cooler. I divided it up in gallon sized baggies and had it uh, one for each day of our trip. Oh, that's right. The snack is the, like the day bag snack bag. Yeah. It was like, here's your new bag of snacks for us. Put it on. And I put it on the side of me while I was driving and I just worked through it. And then whatever was left over went with the other bag from the day prior to that or whatever. Yeah. And it just got set aside. So basically how this worked was, yep. um, I knew that it was going to be like four days driving down, four days driving up or yep. whatever. And so I went ahead and I took our gallon bags and in each bag, I was like, just a little side note, our little puppy, well, I call him a puppy, but he's an old man dog, Smokey. He's joining us today. So is Bandit, our other dog. Um, he's dreaming. He's sleeping and he's dreaming. So if you hear a little bit of a bark in the background, that's what's going on. <laughs> anyway, the gang's all here today. So, um, so anyway, so I figured I was like, well, probably about two granola bars each per day. And I put like a handful of Hershey Kisses, like just a bunch of things. And then I put all of those in a, like a bag, like a, like a reusable shopping bag. Yep. And that was, again, like we talked about in, when we were talking about compartmentalizing, I put that kind of towards the back of the, the vehicle. And then just each day we grabbed that and it came in the hotel with us at night. Yep. And all of that, like, it just kind of was what we worked from every single day. And it was nice because, especially when you're driving really long distances, sometimes you can aimlessly eat and eat and eat and eat. And you might not realize that in one day you took down an entire box of granola bars that was designed to last you the entire trip. Yep. So that was really useful. It was also nice because we put the trash right back in. The yeah, bag. right back in the bag. So if you finish the bag, you were good to just throw the whole thing out. Yeah. Or it was already separate. And then when you got back to the hotel at night, you could clean it out and just take the trash out real quick. And whatever was left over, exactly. we, we compartmentalize it. And that's what we usually did. We would fish out like the granola bar or two that we didn't end yeah. up eating, throw the whole baggie out. And then the beginning of the next day, when I would reach for the next bag, pop those granola bars in there and start the process over again. That was really nice. It was it was phenomenal. That I was a really that. good system. Yeah. Um, also, as a side note, it's a really good system if you're trying to not only budget the food that you have, but also if you're trying to budget like calorie wise, you know what is in. Yeah. You know, like you know, you're not going to go beyond. Your calorie intake and stuff. You know. If you're dieting and stuff, yeah. Um, let's see. Bring along grungy clothes and toss them. This is another good one. <laughs> Why are you laughing as much as you are? This is serious. I lost some of my favorite clothes on this last trip. Yeah, but the, okay. That's because you wear the same t-shirt. You've been wearing the same t-shirt for the past decade, and it was time for it to go. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it was also another smart thing where it's just like some clothes you know, they're not even good enough for Goodwill kind of yeah. thing. You're, like, you're not even donating this. Like, just get rid of it. Use it for the trip. So look, when you're yeah, driving, what you're looking for is comfort. <laughs> and you're also looking for something, especially if you're traveling with kids or uh, let's be honest, if you're just not worrying too much about how you function as an adult, or maybe you're just a little bit of a sloppy adult. I am. I'm not going to lie. Russ is too. Sometimes you drop that Hershey kiss and it gets stuck underneath the seatbelt and then you have a big old chocolate stain on your shirt. It just happens. Okay. It's personal experience, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> So, but you it's you guys specific. know, if you have kids, though, if you've ever experienced oh, yeah, this, sure. you know that, like, <coughs> excuse me, sometimes these things get stuck on your clothes, you, you, like, you get a stain or whatever, and what I like to do, what? No, no, go ahead. You're about to say something. I, 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 I'm going to add to the conversation. Um, What I like to do is, this is a perfect opportunity to clean out your closet, especially of those, like, 
you know, I know kids call them for parents, they call them play clothes. But for us, especially, we do a lot of stuff like outdoors and stuff like that. Camping clothes. We call them play clothes, too. You know, that, yeah, um, my garage that clothes, stuff that's like know. garage clothes, the stuff that's like it's on its last leg. Bring that stuff along for for this travel portion, because you're going to be spending most of your time in the car. And then at the end of the day, when you travel, you know, uh, when you're changing out of your travel clothes, you can get rid of those clothes instead of having to bring them back, which ultimately means less laundry. But it also means more room in your luggage for stuffies, stuffies and other various Disney souvenirs. So this is also something that I think is a good tip, even if you are flying to Disney or really traveling anywhere. Uh, bringing along those grungy clothes or those clothes that are on their last leg, as especially as like night clothes yeah. or just to hang around the resort, you know, if, for those times where you just need something on, but you're not wearing anything fancy, that's a good chance to get rid of that stuff, um, you know, toss it or whatever and, and free up some space in your luggage. Yeah, it worked out great. And especially if you're driving, as you know, it's going to take a little bit, uh, you know, more time. Uh, in more days than flying, so you definitely need more clothes. Mm -hmm. uh, unless you're reusing clothes, you can wash them as I well. Mean, obviously, yeah, you, you can wash them and stuff like that. But like the fact that you don't have to worry about it, you save the space, you don't have to do the laundry, and you were probably gonna get rid of them anyways, or they were never gonna get one for another six to eight months and still be in the back of your closet. Yeah, you know, it worked out pretty good. I like that system. I did like that system too, especially yep. because I'm the type of person who really does not get rid of things. So I no joke I, got rid of clothes that I've had for yeah, 10 years. Yeah, that's not a joke at all. I um, love those clothes. That's why. <laughs> and it was time to let them go. You know, again, you hold on to things. Yeah. This is your chance to, to get rid of that stuff. Um, I mentioned on here, number five, compartmentalize. But I'm not going to go over that again because we already talked about that in a previous episode. So you can go check that out. And we even talked about it earlier. And we did, yeah. It's so, it's so good. That it Just reiterate yeah. it. it. Just so, real fast. Yeah. Again, it's perfect. Make sure that you're packing your car in such a way that you can easily access the things you need today without having to, like, dig. You know? Yeah. Think about the way you're packing. Like I said, we talked about that um, in a previous episode. So be sure to check that out. Number six on our list is make sure it's portable. Let me explain what I mean by this, because this is a mistake that I made during our last trip, and I don't want you guys to make this mistake, okay? When you bring a car, sometimes you might avoid bringing some of the stuff that you would bring if you were flying, right? So, or using some of the luggage that you would use if you were flying. So for example, Maybe if you were getting on a plane, you would use rolling luggage, you'd use that suitcase. Um, but if you're in your car, you're like, oh, I'll bring that tote bag or, oh, I'll bring a laundry basket. That's another thing that people sometimes, myself included, like to do when they travel is they'll pack all their clothes in a laundry basket and just bring it into their room if they're driving mm -hmm. versus actually like putting it in luggage. So we did this during our last trip we had some stuff in reusable bags we had some stuff like we had a variety of different like um things that we used to move none of it i think like one or two small pieces of that were actually rolling luggage and so this ended up being an issue once we got to our hotel specifically we were staying at saratoga springs and that was a entire discussion that we're going to have some other day but at this particular Walt Disney World Resort Hotel, they did not have um, carts or like, you know, those like rolling bell carts or whatever yeah. to use in order to bring your stuff up to your room. And so what this ended up meaning was we had to make like five or six trips to get some of the stuff from the car up to our room because we hadn't made some of it as portable as it should have been. Yeah. That was um, a little rough. That was a little rough. It was a little annoying. And so my my suggestion and one of the I, I don't know if it's gonna be that way for every Disney hotel, but the reason I mention this is because I want to make the suggestion of making sure that whatever it is you are bringing with you is portable because it will make all the difference if you do. 
you're bringing your own car. Maybe you have a minivan and you've got one of those folding wagon things that you would take Some to the beach. Yeah. Bring that. It'll make your life so much easier versus if you are bringing like laundry baskets and maybe like, you know, tote bags and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're trying to make things portable because it's not the same. Mm. So nothing to say about that. No, I, I can't disagree because I mean, the one of the nice things like, you know, you have your luggage, you have luggage with wheels. Then you have the bag that goes on top of the luggage for like your thing. Plus you have a backpack. So you're moving three bags there. If you're doing little mini totes, you're, you know, you're holding maybe two to, I mean, if you're really hardcore, four. And that's, I think that's the thing. So our trip was during Christmas and we were bringing a few extra things because we were driving and we mm -hmm. knew like, oh, we have extra room. So we'll, you know, ah, just bring that thing. Yeah. Um, and honestly, I couldn't tell you what it was that we brought that was extra, but it still, we brought it along. And it just, I would have done it so differently if I knew that we wouldn't have a way to get the stuff into our room, mm. which is so confusing to me because the the resort we we're staying at was a DVC resort. We are DVC members. Normally when you're staying at those places, you're staying for extended amounts of time anyway. So it, it should have had a way for us to easily get our stuff I'm very the surprised room. that they didn't have a cart. I'm, I'm like blown away that they didn't have a cart, but... Like I said, we'll get to that <laughs> some other time. We will talk about that. Um, but yeah, those are basically our tips and tricks. That's what I had. Do you have any other tips and tricks that you want to share? Um, I'm going to reiterate it again because it was just so good and it helped out the trip so much for driving. And I know we talked about it in a previous episode, the podcasts and having stuff downloaded for entertainment purposes. Yeah. Preloading your entertainment before you go was huge. Yeah. I can agree with that. Yep. That was just gold. For sure. Um, but yeah, so that's about it as far as tips and tricks are concerned. But before we move on from <laughs> before we move on from this, I do want to say that in our episode for calculating the cost of driving, I said that I was going to make some sort of worksheet. Yep. And I went ahead and did that. So if you go back to twofoolishmortals.com slash podcast and you hunt through to find that, uh, that particular section of our, um, or that particular episode of our vacation planning podcast, you will find a downloadable, like a link to the downloadable worksheet mm -hmm. in that post. So, if I'm, if I'm confusing you, I apologize. Lots of words coming out of my mouth. Visit twofoolishmortals.com slash podcast and find the Driving to Disney Vacation Planning Special episode on calculating cost. In there, that's where you're going to find your worksheet. Hmm. Does that make sense? My The words I'm saying making sense? Yep. Great. Um, so, yeah. That about does it for this particular episode. Basic, but very, very good, very helpful stuff. Um, stuff you don't think about because it's so simple. Sometimes we overcomplicate things as humans. Yeah. So. Um, of course, if you have any tips and tricks for driving to Disney or anywhere for that matter, we would love to hear what they are. You can share them with us by going on over to twofoolishmortals.com, clicking the menu and hitting summon. There you can contact us directly or as I mentioned before, twofoolishmortals.com slash podcast. Click on this episode and you can share your comments right down there in that comment section below can also share your comments over on YouTube if that's where you're listening to this. And you can also join the Two Foolish Mortals Jamboree over on Facebook. Yep. So we did rename the page if you are listening to this and you heard us talk about it in the past. Go ahead and search Two Foolish Mortals Jamboree on Facebook. You'll find our group and that is where you can be part of the discussion about pretty much everything that we talk about, including this. 
Even stuff we don't. Even stuff we don't, for sure. Because we've had some people already start talking about things that are adding in things that we weren't even thinking about or talking about, which exactly. is awesome. So we have a few good conversations going on there right now. Um, I also throw out some topics in that in that page over <laughs> in the Jamboree where uh, I'm kind of like getting your thoughts on some of the stuff that we might be dis discussing in the future. So if you want to be part of what we do here, you could actually be playing a role. By joining, joining in the Jamboree. Yep. So, but I think that about does it for today, guys. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. I hope that you enjoyed this episode of the Vacation Planning Special. And next week, we will see, or next week, sorry, tomorrow. Tomorrow, we will see you back here, same time, same place. And we're going to tell you the story of our most recent drive to Disney. Oh, yeah, it's a doozy. You're going to want to log, in, log on. You're going to want to listen for that one. <laughs> All right. So I will see you guys back here tomorrow. And until then, we hope the rest of your day is filled with glitch delight. Bye, everybody.